All right. Welcome to Erie Shores Prepping. I'm your host, Greg. Welcome to the new subscribers. I certainly do thank you. Appreciate you. Remember to give me the thumbs up, the likes, the shares. Leave your comments both on YouTube and Rumble. Follow me there as well. The tragedy that happened in Memphis is just what it is. Cops out of control. A young man was beaten to death. And... Uh, the consequences will be determined by jury trial and such. Other consequences that may be relevant to you would be getting caught up in a protest or riot, which you are not participating in. And I'm assuming you are not standing with your AR and saying, I'm going to protect this auto dealership as we saw up in Wisconsin. You are out and about minding your own business and a flash mob occurs and suddenly you find yourself in deep trouble. You have to be aware of what's going on. It's situational awareness. If you're out with the missus or your family just enjoying the time or you're downtown working, whatever, and you get caught up in that, let me offer you a few suggestions to help you potentially survive. First off, avoid the area completely. Forget about your curiosity. It's not worth it to get clubbed or killed or, you know, beaten up or whatever because you don't support that group. Shut your mouth. Avoid the area completely. Wait for it to show up on the news or listen to it on the radio. Take a detour if you're in your vehicle. Find an alternative route and get out of there. If that means turning around, doing a U.E. and saying, well, we're not going to the movies tonight. Let's be safe. Go home or out to dinner, or whatever, get out of there. Cancel your appointments. Miss your appointments. Do whatever you have to do. Just get out of there. But let's say you're working downtown or whatever, and the mob happens, and you're off work. You're trying to get home. Forget about your car. You're not going to be able to drive it on the streets. Instead, go sideways through the mob. If you try to go head on to it, you'll never make it. In boating, you have to, what we call tack, zigzag against the waves. You're still making progress, doesn't seem like it, but go sideways against the mob to get to the other side. If you have your family or friends or significant others, hold hands, but better yet, link arms together at the elbows. Get them close to you, hold on to them, and keep your arms linked at all times, if at all possible. That'll keep you from getting separated and it'll keep you on your feet. It is very important to get out of that situation in life. In case you are confronted by some of these people and you know what the group is about, say, hey, look, you know, I support you. I'm just trying to get out of here. I support you. I agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, there's no reason to harm anybody. Let's, let's quietly or whatever, calmly protest. You know, I have my family with me, whatever. And last resort would be violence. The last thing you want to do is try to take on a mob and with your family and everything else and get the hell beat out of you and killed. Shut your mouth, lie through your teeth, do whatever you got to do. Just get out of there. Forget about taking a video and saying, look at this, I got this for the news. Skip it. Get out of here. Get to a safe place a public place, if at all possible, that hasn't locked its doors already, but get out of there, all right? So that's the one for situ situational awareness. I beg your pardon, situational awareness. And it could happen at any point. We've seen it with Antifa. We've seen it with Black Lives Matter. I'm sure we're going to see it down there in Memphis or other places, New York. It could happen at any time, but I hope those helpful hints uh, you take to heart. Secondly, if you are preparing, which you should be for a natural disaster and the balloon goes up, but you're saying, well, I'm by myself, I'm divorced, and I don't have custody of my kids, what are you going to do? Have you thought about that? Or you're separated and you're not with your kids, or you're married, but you're working, you're both working. Do you have a plan? Who is primary to pick up the children? Do you know the school's phone number? Do you have the information to the teacher 
Are you on the registry to pick up your kids? They're not, you know, theoretically, they're not just going to hand the kids off to anybody. You have to be on there saying, yeah, I can pick up my child or children as well as my wife or my girlfriend, whatever. As long as you're on the registry in case of an emergency, who is going to pick up the children? Number one. So if you're divorced, at least be civil and have a plan with the missus saying, who's getting the kids? All right, we're not going to have a custody battle over that. The paramount is our children's safety. This is an SHTF. Who picks them up? Do you have your divorce decree to say, listen, we, sh we share joint custody in case whatever, the cops stop you, we're sharing joint custody, I'm the dad, this is the mom, we're divorced, but we share custody, these are my children. This, let's not do this right now. Have a copy of your custodial agreement and your divorce decree. Have phone numbers. Have a doctor's phone number, the hospital. Have a copy of whatever medications your children may or may not be on. Make sure you have it. Make sure the kids have it. Listen, you know, this is all I could do when I was in first and second grade to remember my coat and shoes. And this is going to be an SHTF situation. If your child is on insulin or something, make sure they have it with them. This is not the time to forget that stuff. So be aware of what your children's needs are. Clothing. Make sure you have that. Your, their cell phone numbers. Make sure you know your kid's cell phone numbers, for God's sake. In case your phone isn't working, do you know how to call somebody? Do you have the numbers written down someplace else that you can use a landline or somebody else's phone to call for help? Or call them, call your wife, ex, whatever it is. And uh, let's see, I'm sorry, I'm looking at this. The medical information, the school phone number, and the doctor's phone number. These are just some of the things I wanted to bring up to you. It could happen at any point, and I believe we could be at any point at any time. But I hope those things help you. Hopefully, we won't need them, but at least have plans for each situation and make sure your children understand as well. In case there's a crisis, look for mommy or daddy and or uncle, whoever's authorized to pick them up. Make sure they understand, I am to meet you right here. This is where we're going. Make sure you have food, water, medicine for everyone. And then have a way to contact a significant other and say, hey, I got the kids, we're good. Be considerate. All right, I hope you find this helpful. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing to Your Shores Prepping. I'm your host, Greg. As always, get yourself right with God. Ask for forgiveness for your sins and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Greg out.